Okay, I'm here joined by Ed Strongman, who's Chief Test Pilot for Military at Airbus, who's going to tell us all about the A400M. Ed, uh, where are we in the A400 in flight test programme right now? What are you looking forward to achieving this year? Okay, well, where we are at the moment is we've just uh, completed uh, the initial type certification. In fact, we have uh, one more flight to do, which is an icing test. It's difficult to get the conditions, but effectively, we've just about wrapped up the uh, initial uh, type uh, certificate. And uh, the next real big thing is to move into the, all the work we're going to do this year, which is to complete the work uh, for entry into service for the first aeroplane for France at the turn of the year, and to really get into the meat of the military development certification program. Okay, and how many test aircraft are you flying? Um, you've, you've got quite a unique setup with two flight, set, set, flight test centres in to roam over Euro Europe. Uh, so can you tell us something about that as well? Yeah, we have uh, five uh, aeroplanes in the test program. Uh, it just happens that three of them are registered in France and two of them are registered in Spain. But in fact, uh, they're interchangeable. Uh, we move them uh, to whichever site is best for a particular test. Uh, roughly, I can say that uh, a third of the test flying is done from Seville and two thirds is done from Toulouse. But uh, we go to wherever we need to, to uh, find the conditions or wherever we need to do the flight testing program. Okay. You had a slight hiccup last year with some uh, gearbox issues. How did that sort of affect the test schedule? Uh, well, obviously, we didn't fly at uh, Le Bourget last year, which is a big disappointment, uh, particularly for me. Uh, and it uh, gave us uh, some delays uh, following that because we needed to change some engines. Uh, but uh, we recovered from that. Uh, from September, we started to accelerate. And as I said at the beginning, we've actually achieved our objective, which was to get the initial type certification uh, around about the end of the year. So we're actually pretty much back on schedule. Okay. Well, what does an A400M chief test pilot actually do? What's your av average day like? And, and how many other pilots and aircrew engineers are in your team? Uh, it's uh, not an easy <laughs> question to answer uh, because the uh, test pilot industry does a lot of different things. Uh, my primary job uh, right at the moment is uh, managing the safety of uh, the program for the A400. But like any test pilot, uh, there are many challenging things to do. And the, I would say one of the most interesting and demanding at the beginning of the program was the discussion with the design office for the operational requirements for the airplane. Uh, getting into the detailed design of how the cockpit and the rest of the airplane was going to work, uh, validating that in the simulators. We spent a, lar a large amount of time uh, in the development simulators. Uh, then that moves into uh, more, I would say, full-scale type tests in the simulators. And then where we are today, which is in the flight test program. So in the flight test program, there are obviously many um, demanding and interesting flight test tasks to do, which is uh, a privilege to be able to do and also hugely satisfying uh, things like the VMCG, the MU type tests. But in parallel to that, another job for a chief test pilot is uh, to promote the airplane. So I'm here talking to you today. Uh, uh, we do uh, the uh, demo flights at the air displays, obviously talk to a lot of our customers, and uh, generally um, telling the world uh, about how good the A400 is, which is true. What's, what's the highlight bit of the, the, the flight test program for you so far? Have you got a favourite part of the testing? Uh, I, to do a first flight on a new aeroplane is always a highlight for any test pilot, so it's difficult to, to beat that. But clearly, within the program itself, there are many particular tests where it's extremely satisfying to say, hey, I did that well, That's uh, we've actually got the results, and it was done uh, efficiently and correctly. Uh, so those are the sort of the VMU, the, the, the demanding tests. And uh, there are also other tests, uh, I would say the first airdrops we did, they're not hugely demanding, but uh, really gave me a huge amount of pleasure and satisfaction to, to get back to using the airplane in an operational way. Okay. Uh, and you, so you mentioned simulators. Um, today's simulators are obviously highly realistic in, in flight modeling fidelity, uh, but was there anything that came as a surprise when you got to the real aircraft? Uh, I would say probably the simulators are great for most aspects of the airplane, but clearly they can't uh, cover all the uh, aerodynamic effects that you can have, uh, have on the airplane. Uh, so we found some buffeting issues, some uh, other issues that I'll talk about in the presentation today. Um, what could I say of a particular interest? Uh, the ice shapes on the, the leading edges of the airplane, we found some um, unexpected uh, I would say buffet and loads on the tail at the high angles of attack. 
and that required a redesign of the way we were de-icing the leading edge of uh, the wing. So even today, there are a lot of surprises. You can't simulate everything. Okay. And you're an ex-Herc uh, man. Uh, how do the A400M handling and flight deck compare to the, uh, your experience with the C-130? Uh, well, in terms of the flight deck itself, it's uh, an another world. I mean, we're using uh, A380 modern technology, uh, hugely integrated cockpit. Uh, so in that sense, it's a different world. And also, handling qualities are different. I mean, the, the C-130s are still in my heart as my first operational airplane. And uh, when I went to fly the engine flight test bed after a couple of flights, all the old connections, like a bicycle, they sort of they came back to me. But uh, the A400 is a 21st century airplane. It's much more agile, much more maneuverable, and uh, a really, really good and fun airplane to fly. Okay. Does the fact that the, the A400 is being certificated under ESA rules, uh, 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 ESA rules, sorry, uh, change anything in practical terms from the from other military flight test programs? Um, in fact, I'm not sure when the last military flight test program was. I mean, uh, in the sense that for the tanker for the A310, we did that basically to civil requirements with an extension into the military world. Uh, the MRTT is on the same type of uh, system. And for the A400, uh, what we actually did was uh, to take uh, the EASA requirements, compare those with uh, DEFSTAN in the UK, the MILSPEC and others, noted what the difference was and then added some crease, I would say some additional military requirements which we add on. And even in those areas, for some functions like the OBOGs, it was actually easier to keep with the uh, civil requirements. So uh, I would say the civil requirements have been validated with enormous number of airplanes over a long number of years and uh, they're pretty good. Uh, uh, the last military transport airplane is a long time ago, so it's actually better to keep with what we know, which we know is a good standard. Okay. You, you previously demoed the uh, A400 in a, in a very exciting display, uh, uh, flying display. Uh, can we look forward to the aircraft flying at Farmer and React this year? Yes. <laughs> I'm waiting to get back and uh, show the airplane again, and uh, our plans are to come back uh, this year to fly at both React and at Farmer. Okay. And in, in, the, in the flight test program, where, where does the sort of uh, the Airbus part end, and where does the national military ones take over? Would you do air-to-air -air refueling, and do ops or low-level cargo dropping? What's the cutoff point? Uh, in fact, we have responsibility to do, um, I would say, a, a full military clearance. Uh, now we've finished the basic uh, requirements for the airplane. The next task for the next two years is to actually. Uh, move into the airdrop world. For example, we'll take a whole set of weights of uh, loads. Uh, we'll cover the, the weight envelope and the size of parachute type of envelope. Uh, in terms of uh, low-level flight, yes, we'll cover low-level flight. We're going to qualify the MVGs, uh, the enhanced vision systems, uh, the defensive aid system. So effectively, our task uh, within Airbus is to give the military a fully qualified airplane. Uh, that doesn't mean that there won't be work to do afterwards. Uh, each nation will have its own particular loads, and those will need to be cleared. And some of the nations will have some particular um, military equipment that they will want to clear themselves. But by and large, we will actually give the nations a fully qualified airplane for the military task. Uh, you, you've in uniquely had the, uh, the head of Airbus, Tom Enders, do a parachute jump for the A400M. Do you have any sort of concerns that he, his first flight on the new aircraft, he wanted to get straight out of it? <laughs> it's great to have a boss who's enthusiastic about aviation, and uh, he was pushing us to get into the airplane as soon as he could. Um, we said we needed to be professional about the, this, and uh, we obviously we did the normal clearance. We got the test jumpers from France and from the UK. Uh, to come and to do the initial clearance, but he was following on very fast after them. Uh, and it was great for us, and it was great for him uh, to jump out the airplane uh, with a group of uh, three, four parachutists and uh, land in Spain. Okay. And what's your proudest moment uh, on this, uh, being on this project so far? Um, you can't beat a first flight in a new airplane, so uh, uh, that was a huge moment, I think, for me personally. Uh, but equally, it was great to bring the airplane uh, just after the first flight, or in, in the year following, uh, to, to Riyadh and to Farnborough, and to bring it home, if I could say that, as a, as a British test pilot, and show the airplane to, to, the, to the UK. Okay. Uh, okay. My final question, if money were no object, um, 
What, what, what aircraft would you have in your personal hangar to just to, to fly for fun? <laughs> That's an impossible question. Um, well, obviously, for long range shopping for my wife, I need the 380. Um, and for the short range, nipping down to the shops, a gazelle or a little helicopter. But I suppose uh, for pleasure, there's probably an era of aeroplanes that I like, which is, uh, I would say, the sort of Hunter A7 era, where you actually had relatively simple aeroplanes with a really good performance, uh, uh, handling qualities uh, which were demanding but rewarding. Uh, so one of those sort of airplanes uh, would be my favourite to be in the hangar, just to nip out uh, for an hour to whiz around and come home again. Brilliant. Thanks very much for your time.